Conservation District continues to have a close relationship with now the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, we do uh, house them in our building. Um, we do work closely with them, funding through them, um, technical assistance through them as well. But we very much have our own staff now where we have technical staff that can provide the same kind of services that that original federal staff was doing. And actually conservation districts in Washington state now have more employees than NRCS does. Um, that's something that's happened in the last couple of decades, a little bit of a flip flop. Um, so conservation districts now are uh, much more active. Our, we have a staff of seven. As I said, we have an open position right now for district engineer, and we're also looking for a financial manager. And so um, I'll just throw that out there, a bit of a shameless plug for us. Um, if you know someone who might be interested in that kind of work, we'd love to hear from them. We have an annual budget in the last few years that ranges from two to $4 million. Um, that is mostly project funding. So um, on the ground projects that we've done, fish screening, fish passage, um, on-farm irrigation system conversions, that kind of work. Um, we do have about 25 uh, active grants right now. And then we also have local funding um, that our board uh, sought in 2006 and was approved by the Board of County Commissioners, which is in our RCW, um, called the System of Rates and Charges. So if you own property in the district boundaries, you are paying, you can see it on your property tax statement, you are paying into the conservation district. We are limited by our RCW to $5 per parcel and up to 10 cents per acre. It's a little bit different um, on different parcels through our county, depending on the kind of um, use that they have. Um, in general, it's about $4.91 per parcel and then a few cents per acre, depending on whether or not you're irrigated or not irrigated. Um, and these grants are the grants that we get to do work like we did on Catherine's property, like we were able to provide to Mid-Columbia Fisheries. I don't know, Catherine, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, well, I thought people like might like to know. So Mid-Columbia Fisheries came out and, and created a grant. And one of the really interesting things that Mid-Columbia has figured out, along with what we're learning about trees, that trees and the other uh, talk to each other underneath and they create a big ecosystem. They've also found out that if you put projects together, uh, like our project plus a project in the upper Yakima to create a grant application, it demonstrates to the state legislature. The state legislature is in charge of um, handing out the money that's available at federal and state. And so they create this, uh, the Department of Ecology creates this big list of all of the projects. And in 2020 on that list, our project was number 13 out of more than 300. And um, that was really great for us, but our project is connected with a project upriver, the second stage. So it shows longevity in order of maintaining the Yakima River, keeping pollution out of the river, helping fish. So those are the things that they're doing. So in the money for the grant, there's a 25% match that has to come from local funds. And KCCD provided two different um, matches in two uh, different pockets. Um, as landowners, we are also providing, we're, uh, we say on the land, uh, we're going to uh, uh, keep the land in the way that we modify it through the grant for at least 10 years, which we're happy to do. From our perspective, um, we view this as a way of being good ancestors. And so we think of this as something we hope will be here hundreds of years from now. And um, what the grant bought was uh, crews that come out and prepare the land. So about a little over eight acres of our property is uh, planted in what they technically call polygons. And uh, they put down ground cloth to keep weeds down and places to plant. And then they fence or cage all of the plants because we are also the home to deer and raccoon and otter and bobcat and all kinds of animals who love to eat or burrow into the plants. And they will come back in uh, the, the spring and we will be providing our irrigation water and also the electricity to pump the water um, to an irrigation system for the 2,500 baby plants that were planted on our property by uh, both paid crew and volunteers. And I have some pictures I'll show you in a second. Um, and uh, each plant will get its own little drip. And that plant will not get to drink all the time. It turns out they only need to drink about once every week or so. And some of the plants are gonna be monitored and it'll be part of a larger system. And for the first three to five years, the ground cloth stays down and the fences stay up. 
to protect the plants until they can get to the water table, which is about eight feet down. So we decided in addition to planting along the bank, we would give over some more of our land to plant a mixed forest of cottonwood, ponderosa pine, Gary oak, and other plants. And so I'm gonna just show a few pictures from, from what it looks like when you see that grant um, in, in living color, as it were. One of the big problems along the Yakima because we changed the flood is that you have mature cottonwood trees. This is a dead snag, which is just beautiful on our property, but you don't have new, new ones growing. And so that's what we're hoping will happen. And we have a lot of rocks on our soil. And so um, unsurprisingly, they had to do a lot of digging to make the holes for all these plants. They put up sturdy posts because we're gonna have eight feet fences. And these are some of the wonderful plants that these plants were growing in Yakima. And uh, so they're native to this area. And so there's the ground cloth with the holes ready to dig. And these are wire cages. It's more than 360 plant, uh, plants in wire cages. My husband built over a hundred of them. And here's the day that we had a volunteer day where all these folks are out. That's my sister-in-law who works for the Soil Conservation Service people from the university and the community and our relatives. And uh, here they're pounding posts. Each of the hundreds of posts had to be pounded down. And as you can see, we have a lot here. And now there are cottonwoods along our bank. And some of them are protected that way. And that's my dog. And um, so we are so grateful for the help that KCDD provided both um, putting us in touch with Mid-Columbia and also um, providing the additional grant money. And we are really happy to participate in educational activities like this so that other people feel like it's not a big deal to have a little bit of their land set aside so that all of us, including all of the plants and fish and animals that live here can live together peacefully.